Listen up. <laughs> here we go. Rap Radar Podcast is B-Dot, Elliot Wilson. And today we're here with Voodoo, man. Woo. Voodoo.com. Voodoo's our guest? No, not Voodoo. <laughs> That's what we're rolling with today, Voodoo.com, man. Don't get logged to subscriptions and contracts, you know, rent what you want to watch. Yeah, you can get early access, watch many of the ladies' movies. Basically, it's a platform where you can watch movies, man. You know, a little competition to that Netflix and out there, you need to get on that Voodoo. That's the new wave, man. Never heard of Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> we off that, man. It's 2017 around the corner, man. It's time to switch your style up. Go to Voodoo.com. There's thousands of movies you can get look, viewage of without free limited commercials, man. Not a lot of commercials, man. Try something new or watch a classic when a free movie will do, man. Absolutely. So go to you can also get it on the Android app, too, as oh, well. Yeah. Got to do mobile, baby. You got to watch things on a mobile device, man. But make sure you go to voodoo.com, man. Yep. I don't know if there's comments to leave, man, but let them know the rap rate I sent you, man. Absolutely. Voodoo. All right, man. This is Magic here, man. We got a special guest, man. This is extremely rare, man. We've been trying to get this guy to talk to us for a long time, man. Dave Free is here, baby. Food and beverage. <laughs> 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 Mr. TDE, how are you, sir? I'm good, man. I'm blessed. Congratulations, man. Exciting year for TDE, man. A very, title very. unmastered. Blank face LP. The Sun's tirade. Introverted intuition. You must be looking at my Twitter. I'm Do what thou that wit. It's been a busy year. Needless very to busy say. year, yeah. Very busy year. Did you know it was going to be those five projects? Like, how, how, now when you look back on the year, like, what, what are some of your reflections just overall? It was actually like, another whatever. project people don't know about, but, you know. Another project? Yeah. What? Oh, exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, yeah, yeah. Nah, it was six projects this year. And what's the six is, is... They'll know next year. We'll people give know next year. No, people know next year. Mm. Top of next year? Maybe. Okay. You, how do you decide? How's the method? Can you take right. us into the method of There's the no madness? There's no method. There's no method to the like madness. Like, asshole complaints just, and the very random. <laughs> and, you know, me and... Me and me and the guys, we chop it up and we, we figure it out as we go. It seems like there's a lot of unconventional kind of rollouts when it comes to the TDE uh, process. Is that on purpose? Like... Um, I mean, what's conventional these days, anyway, mm. you know? So, uh, I think the, for us, I think our powers is in numbers and, and, you know, we don't really sign a lot of artists, but the artists that we do sign are, you know, very deep, I, I guess people could say, are, right. have layers to them. So, yeah. I mean, that makes it unconventional. Right. Because we don't have the right, the standard drop a single, yeah. drop an album, you know. It's more about culture and you know us curating our label and our our business you know mm -hmm. what's well, interesting like one of the new ones was isaiah rashad obviously and i just think it's very interesting on his album the sun's tirade you play a prominent role with the skits and everything and kind of oh, some shit. of like the real life stuff i guess you play out on the album right yeah do you do you think that was real or fake i think there's probably some truth in right. everything all right I just want to ask. <laughs> <laughs> can you um, confirm or I can, deny? I can see you saying find your topic, find a hot topic, like find the topic or direction of that type of stuff. Because I know you. Some really of them in there was real. Some of them was like some were real voicemails and some were fake voicemails. But yeah, yeah. But I mean, I mean, it was all. It was they all were based from real voicemails. You yeah. know what I mean? And real like scenarios that happened. But you know, he couldn't put the ones, the real ones on there. Mm. Yeah, they're a little more aggressive. Why would you guys decide to share some version of that even with the public? Because I know he also spoke uh, he about He called it. me after, like, after the album. Like, we, we was just finished up the album that night. And he was like, yeah, I want to I wanna put a, I wanna put some of these voicemails on there. I'm like, nah. And he's like, nah, but I, I, people should know this process. I'm like, nah. And he was like, well, I'm going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. So he started, you know, cycling through them. And the ones that were too too aggressive. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> What's too aggressive? Like you're just saying. Oh, I go cursing? off, man. I go off. Yeah. Like you give us an example. Like nah, nah, nah. <laughs> put him back. Sorry, tough love. <laughs> tough love. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, that's like Zay's, like, like literally my little brother. You know, like you know, all the artists are for for you know for the management. They're like they're our kids. You know what I mean? Mm, like yeah. we protect them. Like I I I feel they'll tell you all the artists tell you most of the times when I went off, it's been because somebody's done something directly to them, not anything to me. So. Mm, yeah. Um, for me, it's like uh, I just want them to feel comfortable, you know what I mean, and however that comes. Mm. But one last I mean. thing with Isaiah, though, I know he had spoke about publicly his battles with drugs and stuff, and there was a time where Top would put him on time out, right? Like you guys mm -hmm. had to really deal with that. How did you How did you manage the situation? How did you How did you feel about it from your perspective of dealing with that? I mean, it was a it was a crazy time period because you know he's so young, and it was like really for him dropping that project right after he dropped it, then going on tour with Q and having so much access to and freedom and no real, no real supervision, you know, it, it was like one of those things where, you know, 
the best way to manage to manage it is to just keep them close and mm. you know watch over them and that's what we did you know we got our own studios and our own houses and you know once you've been on restriction you gotta you gotta sit down you know you gotta sit down until you get right and mm. we're not gonna let any of our artists go out there and do no stupid shit you know mm. not when we can protect them or slow it down can i cuss on you yeah, do what you yeah, want please show. yeah no, no we're not gonna allow that to happen we're a family like we are really a family some guys say that shit but we are really a family what is your role as the tde president man what is my role mm-hmm. uh i mean i i just run day-to-day operations of the company mm-hmm. uh direct direct management and creative for the artists so for me it's like it can be it can be as little as picking up a bag and carrying it for i don't give a shit you know i'm right. not I'm, I'm my ego is not anywhere like in, in the in the room so I, i'll carry a bag and and sit on the phone and talk a three million dollar deal for you. It doesn't right. really matter. Whatever is wherever I'm needed, that's where I, I apply myself. Right. It seems like guys have a very hands on approach. Very. When it comes to this. Yeah. I mean, Kendrick has a corporate gig tonight. Very n- nice situation. And you're still running the venue. You're doing sound check. You're still hands on with every single, every single aspect. Right. Yeah. It have to be. I mean, I talk to. I, I I joke about this shit all the time because I meet so many different managers that I have like one artist and they'll have like a team, a cr- crazy crew of people, and <laughs> mm. it's like. You know, I have like my young guys now. I got like a bunch of young guys, and and like uh, we got a small knit team, and we do it. You know what I mean? So it's like you got to be you got to be multi talented to 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 be in this business these days, because like it requires more from the artist. The artists have to do more now. The artists can't just rely on music anymore. It's like mm-hmm. personality. Mm-hmm. Everything's means something. So it means something to the manager too. You got to be. And I don't even like to categorize categorize myself as a manager because I'm not mm-hmm. like. That's the smallest piece of it, you know, the piece of the pie for me. It's like I'm here in whatever shape or form. If I got to direct a video, I'm going to direct a video. If I got to, you know, talk business, I'll talk business. If I got to, you know, carry some boxes, I'll carry some boxes. So how do you know when to assert? Like it's just your instinct? And I mean. And what strength do you think you provide in this? Because you have top who plays his role, punch who plays his role. Like what? What strength do you think you have that that is much needed in this situation? I'm I'm the executor. I like I'm the one that everybody comes to to execute, like. You know, if, if if it's an idea, I'm gonna think of 30 ways to figure out how to do it cost effectively and you know within a uh, company standard. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's really my my overall goal. It's like you know anybody can say the idea, but it's all about putting the muscle to it and doing it. You Have know? you been doing this like your whole life, or like is it just kind of ends on training? Uh, yeah, I would say I've been doing it my whole life. I mean, I started off uh, I started off DJing. Mm. And then went from DJing to producing, and then went from producing to like DJing, producing, managing. Is that what Amia told? What is it? Mia told her? Maya told her? Can't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> the alias. <laughs> <laughs> My, it's Maya Tola. Maya Tola. Maya Tola. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, uh, um, it just, I don't, to answer your question about when did I know to put like whatever I'm doing forward, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's hard to answer that question because you never know. It's like, I'll be with Soul one day and I'll be, you know what I mean? I'll be having to, you know, set up a press run for him. So I might be making 30 calls one day, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. It might be being on the set and making sure everything's going right. It, it can, it varies at different times. You just have to be, yeah, keep your head on the swivel and be yeah. ready for whatever mm-hmm. comes. But to take people back that don't know you and Kendrick grew up together, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Since, uh, I've been knowing Kendrick since ninth grade. Wow. And you had Jay-Z Dame Dash Dreams, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> that was that's the probably the best way to describe it. Right. Well, when you guys signed a Def Jam at that, you know, that one time, like, did you guys think it was on and popping, like, ready to go? Um, of course. Anytime you do anything, you think it's on right. and popping and ready to go. You know, especially when you're that young. But, um, you know, like that was during our that was the, during the same time process when J Rock was, you know, at Warner Brothers, and we didn't really understand that the labels don't do anything for you. You got to do right. everything yourself. So. That was like the time period in our life where it was like, all right, well, you know, hey, what what happens next? Mm. Nobody knows, you know. Yeah. And we, you know, we played the we played the label game, and you think you think that you're supposed to do this, and they're supposed to do this, but no, you have to do everything, you know. Mm. Just, that's just how it is. And before that, you literally hit, hit top to Kendrick's music, like trying to fix his computer or something. Yeah, like that. Uh, it's uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> funny because I seen top out this uh this uh, Tyree should have this thing called Wash Day back in the uh, in. And watch years ago. Oh, and, Tyrese? What yeah. And I went to school with Top Son, mm. Musa, my boy Moose. And 
I used to always tell him, like, man, hook me up with your pops, man. Like, what's up, man? Like, <laughs> man, pops ain't messing with you, man. You know what I'm saying? Moose was like, Moose was, Moose was the own kid, you know what I'm saying? He used to pull up, <laughs> that, pull up Escalades, TVs, and yeah, all that shit, you know what I mean? So it was a, it was a funny time period then uh, to, like, see, you know, me force myself into that to that circle. So I just told Tywin, I'm like, yeah, man. I walk up to him, like, yeah, man, I, do, I work on computers. I can fix all that shit. I can do all this. I'm just talking through my teeth, you know? <laughs> He called me up on. He called me one day. Hey, come through, fix my computer. And my fucking computer was in a hundred pieces, dog. Sitting in front. <laughs> I'm playing Kendrick demo tape behind him. <laughs> yeah, but he already. The funny thing is, he already knew about Kendrick. He already, you know, he already knew about us. You know, yeah. type of type of dude. He he ain't gonna tell you shit. He gonna let you figure it out. Mm-hmm. You know. So. But did you push him to kind of get into the music business? Like I he was already he in the music yeah. business. You know what I'm saying? That's how. That's how I heard about him. I used to hear about all type of people coming up to a studio in Carson. Like we was around the corner, so. You know, we he was like a legend. He mm. was a legend in the streets, you know what I mean, in the hood and everywhere. So everybody knew about him. It was just like, who can actually find him? Who can actually talk to him? And, you know, I had a little in because I had homies that knew him, but it wasn't until, you know, I actually approached him myself and like, yeah, yeah, man, mess with me, bro. And then he was just like, yo, he just he just locked in with me. It's just been, we've been like, like this ever since. What was it about Kendrick's music that you found appealing, even though he was just your friend, you know? Oh uh, well, I I, f- I found Kendrick through the music. It was it was a buddy of mine that I went to uh, boy a buddy of mine named Antonio that went to Gardena with me, and I was like I used to throw these lunch battles. Mm-hmm. So everybody from oh, wow. different schools used to come up to our schools at dish day schools, come to our schools at lunch at these mm-hmm. rap battles, and uh, he was like promoting referee in the battle. Or something yeah, I was like, like I was like it was like Smack DVD <laughs> style <laughs> type shit, yeah. and I was like. Uh, I just I used to come through and like you know tell people to do their thing and then you'll put some time to be money on the table, right? You know, different <laughs> so, things like that. And then uh, my boy Antonio introduced me to that. He's like, yeah, you like me? You like my boy? Mm. And then he he uh, he introduced me to him. But they were in a group like they were like trying to do a group thing at mm. first, you know what I mean? And and I remember the first time I heard him rap, they came to my house. I had I used to DJ, so I had a mm. ton of DJ equipment. I'm like, I gotta impress these niggas, man. <laughs> so I hooked up all my equipment, just plugged everything into everything. It didn't even do nothing. It just put, <laughs> plug it in, turn on, just look right. like you do something. Right. Plugged up everything. The fools came through, and they were just, like, amazed that I had all this equipment. So they just thinking I'm on. You mm. know what I mean? And yeah. Died, I remember the first time he rapped. I was like, just, just, you. You the one. Mm. You know? And just murder she wrote. Right. <laughs> Good kid, Mad City, man. Classic <laughs> rap album. Classic rap album. Is it the last rap classic album? See, this is this is how Elliot baits you <laughs> this in how bait you to in. the switch. This is the bait and switch. <laughs> this is how he baits no, you I really, in. I, I didn't say it was a classic when it first came out. I denied it. I was wrong. It's a classic, man. No, but I, no, but I think it's I think it's the last. I think it killed classic. Rap. There's no more. We don't view records anymore like classic rap albums. We've had re- really good albums since Good Kid, nah, Mad City. Sure. But I don't think that's that's the last rap classic album. I like Two Pimper Butterfly better. Then good kid. Hey, listen, let me. Hey, listen. All right, let me just do this now, Uh-oh. so we can just get this out of the way. <laughs> hey, y'all, uh, to the radio audience out here, podcast audience, podcast <laughs> audience, uh, don't these dudes doing all this nice shit in front of me right now? Oh y'all. boy, this is not them, y'all. That's all I got. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, fellas. What do you mean? I don't talk. I don't out, come on, man. Oh boy. Listen, hey, matter of fact, hey, hit my record button just because they try to take this off, bro. Hit my hit record on this right now, dog. Give a quick. I'm gonna be day for you. What are the studio rules? I'm in trouble now. I feel like nah, I'm, ain't no studio. I just, I just know. Listen, dog. Like you know, hey man. What do you know? What do you know, Dave? B dog, you the biggest troll in the game. <laughs> both of y'all. First of all, first off, both of y'all are the biggest trolls in hip hop today. Y'all figured it out. It's nothing wrong with it's it. It's not a troll. No, it's nothing wrong with it. Y'all just figured. Y'all figured out the game. Y'all figured it out early. I applaud y'all. But y'all figured it out. You, no, other other cats was on the internet. The two dope boys is of the world. You was friends with all those cats. Like they was on the internet before us. We're late to the internet. Nah, this whole trolling and social media. Nah, and all but that you stuff. you came in late, but you figured it out before you came in. Some people that just got in, it was like, oh yeah. Then they start going on about their way, and they figure out <laughs> as they was in there. Y'all <laughs> figured it out before y'all got in. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, I got I liked you guys from a long time ago, you from did. like 2009. Nah, y'all always been supporters. I'm not saying y'all not supporters, but right. you know. Y'all story will change based on who's here. I'm just, I'm just, wait, wait, I'm just the guy. Y'all story will change based on who's here, and I'm just the guy that's that. You know, y'all know me, Elliot. Like I like to laugh. I just want, right. I just want to kick this shit and just talk for real. 
I don't What's be on like that. the other day. Punch got at me because I said, you know, the hottest MCs at MTV, you know, the annual list. Mm -hmm. I said they voted Kendrick on the list, mm -hmm. and I said he shouldn't be on the list for this year for the being the hot. Not MC. even top ten. Nah, I think he had a oh, better yeah. 2015 than he did 2016. Right I mean, but this is this is my thing. Like that's his opinion, and I don't like for me. That's one thing about Punch. He gonna hit you and say, "Oh yeah, because y'all boys or whatever." You know what I mean? But I don't. I don't give a shit right. what people think. Like. You know what I'm saying? As long as as long as I get to go lay down in my in my house and <laughs> drive my cars and live my life and make dope music, like I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I don't be stunned that. I'm just saying, when you say when you say this, I'm gonna call you out. I, I I'm a real dude. I'm gonna call y'all out. I know, I know the truth. <laughs> you know the truth. What, what I, the truth. Well, how do we start this? I'm just saying, good kid. Man. I want to know about your perspective of Good Kid, Man City. Like you you obviously build this whole thing with Kendrick, you build this movement, it leads up to this thing. There's a lot in the line when you create Good Kid, Mad City. Not it. You know what I'm saying? Like, what what was that process like for you? And did you feel like you was delivering this classic? And how did how did that, from your perspective, how did that come together? Um, I mean, shit, I, Kendrick's been making Good Kid, Mad City since I've known him. Mm. So for me, it was like, all those stories, it was just like, you know, it was, for me, when it, the day it came out, it was a breath of fresh air, because like, finally, mm. people get to hear the truth. You know what I'm saying? So... I mean, I don't, you know. Was it close to your personal story? I mean, I I grew up around them, right. so I've seen all those things. I mean, the funny thing is that's, that's only a small piece of the story. So much more he could have mm. talked about, you know what yeah. I mean? And, you know, maybe he will, maybe he won't, but it was just such a small piece of the story in that time period, you know what I mean, for, for me personally, like, I've all, I've seen what he's dealt with since I've known him, mm -hmm. and then I've seen what he's dealt with, you know, like right after I met him. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Up until like now. So for me, it was like it was very personal. It's mm -hmm. just a, that's a very personal album. Every time I listen to that album, I, it takes me. I see shit that y'all don't see because mm -hmm. I was yeah, actually there. You know, right. for real. So what's that transition like? You know, to go from anonymity to celebrity, where the point where Obama is, you know, Kendrick's favorite rapper, like. Man. Been to the White House a few it's times. It's pretty tight, right. man. I can't find it. It's pretty tight, man. I mean, I mean, anytime somebody of that caliber respects your craft, mm. and I mean, like the whole thing is like all the people that do great shit should be talking, right? Mm. And then it's like you know, Obama's great and Kendrick is great, so they should be talking. So we're gonna do the jail polls up in the White House, exactly. Right. You know what I <laughs> mean? So, but I mean, it's, it's the whole thing. Like they should be talking. So for me, when when it happens. For me, it's like, I already knew that was going to happen. That's that supposed mm. to happen because yeah. it's supposed to happen. All the, all the tight people are supposed to be thinking alike and talking and doing this and, and working together. But even though, per, go back to uh, GKMC, even though it's so personal, it, when you have that moment because you guys are so competitive, you guys want to be the best, you always hold yourself to these standards. When you really have that moment and you know that this guy killed it, like he's the top guy, this record's the record. No, for sure. How, what's that adjustment like for you? Um... It's no adjustment, man. I don't think that far ahead. I'm being honest. Like, mm. Kendrick don't think that far ahead either. Top don't either. Like, we wake up in the morning, and it's like, what are we doing today? You know what I'm saying? Like, all of us still have real shit we, in life to do. We still got family. We still got people. We got, you know, like, yeah. we got shit that we dealing with direct. Like, we got to worry about the next day. So, I don't really I don't really pay that much attention to that. Like, you know, that's not really a thing that's on my mind or... I already know we're going to deliver. It's not even a question. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I wake up in the morning. I know what I'm going to do. I turn yeah. up every day. And if you ain't turn up, get the hell away from me. Mm. That's how I roll. <laughs> like, everybody, my whole crew know, my whole office know it. We, our job is to get up every morning and do be better than what we were yesterday. Mm. And if we're not doing that, then I'll, it's no point of being around. But speaking to beat out with Two Pimp or Butterfly, which he likes better, how do you take that challenge on? You feel like that would seem intimidating, right? Like, how the fuck do you follow Good Kid, Mad City? Like, when did it click that? Tim Pimple Butterfly was the direction. So this is the next chapter of Kendrick's career. Um, I mean, the first step is him making the music and us us being honest. You know what I mean? Like that was the first step. He, he had to become that person. Mm. You know what I mean? Kendrick is for me when I when I deal with him, when I talk to him, our conversations are not today conversations. They're tomorrow. You know what I'm mm. saying? They're we live in a moment, but it's we thinking about the future. So. Um, it's not like I, I'm being honest. It's not like we we're at home strategizing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not like a big conversation. Like, oh, well, what do we do next? Right. Or, oh, we can't do that anymore. Or we got to do this. Or no, nah, it's whatever. Whatever feels good. Whatever mm -hmm. feels right in the moment, you do it. Mm -hmm. If it don't feel right, don't do it. And being honest, having people around you that ain't gonna lie to you and just tell you everything tight. Right. 
it's that's yeah. tight. Okay, that's tight. That's not. But, tight. but even a different okay. sound though, because that album has a way different sound than. than it Kick does Kick have City. way different sound, but if you if you come from a system like us, we we gonna do a hundred songs. We gonna you know what I'm saying before the time is done. So it's you don't know what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a bunch of different sounds. Mm-hmm. It's about what what that last final mix and that last bounce down is. You know what I mean? Topics wise, it could be trap beat or the most rhythmic beat ever. Mm-hmm. If you're talking about the same thing, you're still trying to get the same message across. It's just the only mm-hmm. thing that changes is the instrumental. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that what certain people appeal to. But for us, it's like I'm, we're not planning none of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Kendrick don't wake up in the morning like, oh, this, I gotta have a plan. Right. You know what I mean? It's like we wake up, somebody got somebody, somebody brings some beats through, Soundway brings some beats through. That's tight. All right, for sure. <laughs> Done. Like, it's, it's nothing. <laughs> right. It's not one of those. I mean, for, for Kendrick, I'm sure it's a deeper thought process with how he approaches it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not on that side. I'm not, I'm, I don't write music. I don't, you know what I mean? Mm. I, I try to curate his vision the best way possible. So for me, it's like, what do I take from it? When he when I hear what do I take from him? you might be saying something totally different, but what do I get from it? Like when you hear all right or you hear you yeah. where he's really being emotional and, and Yeah, what do I get from it? And then if I ask him, it'll be times where he'd be like, Well, I was trying to say this or he might not tell me at all. Because mm-hmm. it's for for us it's not about what we think, it's about what the consumer thinks. Mm-hmm. It might it might affect the consumer a different way. You might listen to it and get a whole different outlook. We don't want to jade that. Right. Live with you your, like that. You like with, that. Yeah, mm-hmm. live with your outlook. Did you always have that optimism for all the other artists? I mean, obviously Kendrick's your man, but for like you know, even the newer guys, SZA. I wouldn't sign him. I wouldn't sign him if I if I didn't. Mm. I wouldn't do it. All of the artists, all of the, mark my words, we're gonna turn the fuck up. It's, <laughs> it's no option for, for you know what I'm saying. It's no option for nothing but success with us mm. at all. So it has that that has to be there. You have to think like that. You have to think. I want to be the greatest. I want to do the most. And everybody can do it. Right. You know yeah. what I mean. And everybody got to just play their position. And and when your time when your time is up to get called the bat, when called. top call that number, be ready to be ready to swing that bat. Uh, so, I'm sorry. Can you speak on Schoolboy Q's growth? Because oh, yeah. playing face LP uh, nominated for a Grammy. Yeah, man. I mean, Schoolboy, the dedication level. You know his his worth his worth ethic ethic his, you know. Him realizing that, you know, you don't you don't have a lot of time on this earth, and the time that you do have, you better do something with it. Mm. And what he's been able to accomplish during that mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, is very inspiring. I I tell him all the time, man. Like, you know, during that whole process, of even creating like the concepts for the videos and everything, mm. he was so dedicated. You know what I mean? That's the most I ever seen him dedicated before. Even when he was making his album, it was like put studio in my house. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I need a studio in my house tomorrow. <laughs> Make sure you guys, you know what I mean? Right. Like, but I need a, I need a new booth. I need a new mic. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to tell him. You have to wake him up, go to the studio. You don't have to do none of that. He ready. He knows. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I'm just glad that he came into that, into that mind state. You know what I mean? Because he did deliver to me, my, my personal view. He delivered the best album, hip hop mm-hmm. album this year for sure. Blank face. Yes. I saw you tweet one time. You said, you, I wish that people could understand the pressures of being humble around these over-celebrators. What did you mean by I that? I love that quote. Um, <laughs> I just, I just, man, I, I live in L.A., so it's different for me. Like, And it's not nothing to L.A. because it's everywhere. My whole thing is just like, what what people celebrating for? Like, what is, you know, what is a, what, I mean, I, I understand living in the moment. I'm definitely living in the moment. But just people just be over-celebrating. It's like, yo, it's like, come on, we got to we gotta do better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We got to do more. Like I look at like Jay, Kanye, all these all these dudes and they don't like they they so far ahead, you know what I'm saying? We got so much more to do mm-hmm. before we can be celebrating, you know what I mean? And I just feel like that's just it really just applies to the way we, we operate. We don't be caught up in a moment like that. We wanna we wanna do more, we wanna continue to, to show. It's like you can do you could ball for a summer, but I'm trying to be trying to do this for a lot more than just a summer, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, also, like I know, before we get out of here, I want to get a little bit touch on your background too. Like, growing up, did your parents support you of of you know the music endeavors and things like? that? you used to work for your father. Um, yeah, my parents supported me. They su- they supported me as a as you would guess a parent would support mm. someone. You know what I mean? Uh, they they didn't know, mm. and they because I had a good job. I had like a, I was working. You know, I, was, I had a real good job. Mm. So for me, it was like they like <laughs> you about to. About to do what? 
<laughs> the little homies. Do what? what? Do what? <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? But my parents, the thing with me was I've always, uh, I've always, I've always was like the, the strong one mm. in the household. I always knew what I wanted to do. I never like needed. I moved out at 17, so it's like oh, wow. my parents for them it was like, all right, you know what you want to do. We ain't got to tell you what to do. You know what you want to do. You mm. know what I mean? So, I mean, they definitely support it, though, for sure. Right. I saw that you brought your father to, like, a concert. He was singing. He's always pools. blowing Pops up. Right? Pops is sleeping Pops, on the man. couch. Pops, he blew man. up on the couch. He was taking a nap on the couch. Pops, you know man. Pop, Pops is hip. Man. I'm telling y'all, man. <laughs> Pops is Pops is super hip, man. Caught him in some skate highs the other day. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, Dave, what's going on with Sade, man? She's a sweetheart, man. Sade, man. He accidentally texted me the dog, Sade is a sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> so to somebody else. <laughs> He's like, oh, fuck, I got to do the podcast now. <laughs> hey, that's the only reason I did it, y'all. I'm like, Ellie's going to front me out, y'all. Now, nah, Sade, that's my baby, man. You know what I mean? It's For a everybody. dog, y'all. It's a dog. It's a dog. That's my dog. Yeah, that's my partner. You know, she with me everywhere I go. Well, she well, would be here if it wasn't so cold. Well, man, I don't think we just had crazy ass abso, man. What's do what thou wit, man? Like, it seems like he always complains and then it ends up working out right on time with his record. When Ab right? is complaining, though, you got to understand, like, we're talking to him during this time period. So the same thing he's telling the people, he's saying to us. You get what I'm saying? So, um, okay. uh, um, He's saying to us, so it's like the public got to know. Like whenever anything, the time some go public with TD is because we had a private conversation first. Mm. You know what I mean? And you know, top top like that shit too. You know? What I mean? yeah, they would say that he <laughs> likes the controversy. No, top like that shit. <laughs> like, like that. I like the rap on niggas. They troll. Yeah, I like that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, that's why. That's why I'm saying. Like even with y'all, like that's why I stopped y'all. It's a, it's a necessary. You right. know what I'm saying? It's not like. I know y'all be thinking I'll be on y'all head, but I just like to laugh. I just like making y'all feel uncomfortable for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like enough people do that, you know right. what I mean? So I'm what, just wondering. What moves. about the scissors situation? Why do you think there's been so many delays with that from your perspective? From my perspective, I mean, this is the thing. Scissor is the first girl from the company, and we got to do it right, period. And that's just what it is. Like, you know what I mean? And she's passionate and she's dope. And. You know, it's like you gotta, everything has to be on, on pace and on order. And she wasn't, it wasn't like an upset thing. You know, her and Punch, Punch, you see how Punch did? He put up the Joker face, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's funny, right. cause we laughing, you know what I mean? But uh, it's all, everything happens in the right amount of time, you know what I mean? It's not, if it happens too early, it, it could, you miss the window. So we just trying to hit that window, you right. know, every time. Are we gonna see more uh, little homie collaborations and Oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. And how did you get into like you and Kendrick just? Well, it really the the necessity for me directing came from uh, from me not being able to do beats anymore because mm -hmm. beats are like I can make a beat, but if I make a beat, I gotta worry about placing a beat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's not for me in my business. Like I gotta be worrying about getting stuff done. So I can't be out here peddling beats and shit. Right. So <laughs> for me, it's like I direct to because that's that has to be done in mm. time you know what i'm saying like that's a business decision that has mm. to be done in time there's no waiting on that like right got to get a concept together got to shoot it got to execute it and th the whole thing was like me and kendra we were we were writing all the concepts we were writing all the concepts and we were directing we are all of our first stuff we did and it was like we would get with directors that give us treatments and it's like all right cool we, we don't want to do that yeah mm. so we had to start Doing it ourselves. So, how do you think you become a better businessman? Like, what tips can you give? Because now you, like you said, you have to negotiate things on such a higher level now with Kendrick's success. Like, mm -hmm. how do you think you personally, you know, having a mind for business early on? How do you think you've gotten even better through the years? I believe, uh, I believe my will to take it, advice from anyone. Like, it could be a three year old. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't tr treat the situation like. It's all black and white, cause that's what happens when, in my my from my perspective in this business, people treat the business like it's black and white. They think one thing that works for somebody's gonna work for everybody. It's not that way. You gotta like, you gotta be, you gotta keep your head on a swivel. You gotta be able to maneuver. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, the best way possible. And as long as I can stay hip and keep my mind open and not ever get old and jaded and like, oh fuck that, I don't wanna, I don't wanna go to the, you know, I don't wanna do this. I don't. Once you once you once you start saying no, mm -hmm. you're done. Sit it down. Right. You gotta be. You gotta have an open mind. You gotta be open to things. You gotta be open to new arts. You gotta be open to new sounds. You gotta. You know. You gotta stay with the times. Don't. Don't let yourself get dated. How right. do you deal with the toughness of this business and just the fame and the ugliness of? Ain't no toughness in this business. <laughs> Ain't no toughness. People try to say that shit all the time. Ain't no toughness in this business. 
all of my dudes came from the all of my dudes came from the streets. We all grew up in not the best situations. So for us, this is a blessing. Mm. This is a, and it would be fools to mess this up. You know, like the basketball player that get drafted, make all this money, and then get kicked out of the league smoking weed or right. doing some stupid shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like come on, like. We're not we're not those guys. We don't wake up in the morning trying to chase that that vanity. We wake up in the morning trying to chase trying to chase, you know, greatness and a legacy. So, but there has to be dark days. I mean, like he's like going back to Kendrick. He'll talk about hotel room incident or just feeling stressed out about things. Like, oh for sure. I mean, everybody go through something, but this is like this is our platform to to share that with mm-hmm. people and people to agree with us or disagree with us or. So if you if you if you're putting it out there to the world, then. It shouldn't be on your back anymore. You right. know what I'm saying? And that's just with us. It's like, I mean, you're gonna go through shit regardless. No matter what, you can be the most richest man in the world, whatever. You're gonna go through stuff regardless. So, we just, it's just we take it day by day, man. You know, I can't tell you what I'm gonna do tomorrow. I'm gonna tell you. I can tell you that I'm what I'm planning to do tomorrow. Mm. You know what I mean? The helicopters in Australia, or right? Some shit. Yeah, something like that. But New how Zealand. do you? That was New Zealand. <laughs> oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> But how do you stay not being content? I mean, you guys have the success. You have the money. You have the awards. You won a VMA. You got the Grammys. Like, what is keeping you motivated at this point? Like, what Because are you we ain't for? did shit. We ain't did enough. Come like, on, we did. No, we did some. Not for sure. We did stuff, but it ain't enough. Like, I'm never going to be satisfied. The moment I'm satisfied, then, then I'm out. Mm-hmm. I'm doing something else. I need to find, like, that's the whole thing. I told my guys, I said, yo, the moment that I can't push out to the next level, then you should get rid of me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get rid of myself. You know what I'm saying? Because it's... There's no time for that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Why who wanna be on the sinking ship? Mm. You know what I mean? I don't wanna be on the sinking ship. Mm. We all need to be everybody gotta go hard. You know what I'm saying? Hard in the paint. Wake up in the morning, put the time and put the effort in to catch up because it's so many Michael Jackson, bro, so twenty five million. Right. Come on, bro. <laughs> right. There's nothing else to talk about. Everybody wanna wake up in the morning and talk about this. What, but, what are you but, talking but about? But then Kendrick gets Grammy nominations on par with Michael Jackson. Like no, Michael for Jackson sure. had fourteen, Kendrick Lamar had twelve. Yeah, we need 13 now right you know what i'm saying <laughs> doc ain't gonna want to go past that but it's like no nah, we need to we need to keep we got to keep raising the level higher higher so what's your sense what? of validation at this point then is there anything is it a medal is it a trophy nah none of that my sense of validation is the kid that like comes up to me and i says what can you do for me but the kid that says i'm inspired by you and you're gonna see me later that kid that kid and that keep it moving yeah the kid that keep it moving like yo like you know what I'm saying? Like, you gonna see me later? Watch. Mm. I I had a bunch of kids say that to me, and I'd be like, Yo, I said that to somebody else. I said that to Tez. I said that to, wow. you know what I'm saying? I said that to Tez before for sure. I said that to, man. I said to Top, and he definitely saw me later. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, you know, that's that's what motivates us. It's like, you know. Right. What motivated you to share the Untitled Unmastered? It seemed like LeBron was loving levitating. All of a sudden, we got the we got these outtakes and demos and stuff. Like, why did you decide to put that out? Um, we it was right after the Grammys, and me, Top, and Kendrick jumped on the phone, and we were just talking. And we were like, man, do we want to put this out? You know what I mean? Or we already had the music. You know, it was leftovers from the album, so it was just like, yo, is it? Should we? All right. Let's play around, you know what I mean? And we just we just went for it, you know? Mm. Why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> that performance is crazy. I was watching. The Grammys? No, oh, n- not the Grammy performance, but the Jimmy Fallon performance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's probably one of the best this year. Yeah. Hands down. Appreciate it. Or I it? heard that her day was on your head the other night, man. Oh, yeah. That's you what I was You ran saying, to Kendrick? Really? You told me, right? Oh, yeah. You didn't tell so, me. So after the, you know, I said Kendrick <laughs> didn't belong on the hottest MCs list, I run into him you at said, a party. You don't think he belongs on the list at all, just for clarity. Hottest MCs? You realize Untitled did come out this year. But he you did know, win the Grammys. But there's a, it, He's there's, on 8 million guest appearances. Right, but there's okay. there are worse rappers that belong on the list just for being hot, not necessarily the best. I so, don't think there's 10 hot. Okay, but I'll, I'll let you go. I'm sorry. For man. argument's sake, I saw him there. <laughs> just trying to score points for the day. <laughs> and I said, I said, Kendrick, so he's like, ah, Vina, you don't fuck with me, man. Everyone's just Okay, that's said to you? Yeah. He's like, you don't like, you don't really fuck with me, B. I was like, come on, man. He ain't he's talking, talking he ain't definitely talking about the, the uh, that, though. Oh, word? He's talking about you just be trolling. I don't you troll. <laughs> you are a troll, troll, bro. What troll? Y'all, so you what are tro- a troll, what, too. What trolls have we done there? What have uh, we done? Y'all are the king trolls. I'm telling y'all, though. Y'all the king. First of all, I'm going to say this way. Elliot, you're not used to people telling you no. That's number one. That's very true. You that don't is want. True. You're not used to. And when people tell you no, you just like I'm the goat though. <laughs> like, I'm like, Come on, bro. It's a new day, man. Nobody tripping up that shit. And then and then B dot, B dot, B dot is like B dot is like 
He like the You like fake turn up You like a fake Cause you Cause you You can't tell me right now You on some Oh I like Pimp Butterfly But you the, You you always You on the fake turn up You like alright cool I just wanna be in the turned up scene But you don't ever be Where the turned up scene is at Ever <laughs> I don't never see you In the turned up function I ain't I never seen you In the club Nothing well, I don't go to LA That's true But I'm here You know what I'm saying Sometimes so Fake sometimes You be like You know <laughs> Let another person I said, come. I said J Rock. Uh, I said K Dot kicked in the door and he was mad at me, man. Respect Magazine cover, man. Remember what? He was mad at me? What? what about what? The K Dot with the Black Hippie cover. And I said uh, K Dot kicked in the door. I said the J Rock kicked in the door. So it was on the was, cover line. Cast was tight. Yeah, the nah, cover nah, line. Nah, nah, that's nothing wrong not with that. J Rock right. did kick in the door for sure. No, I said K Dot oh. on a mainstream level, but obviously J Rock started the whole movement. Mm -hmm. So they took it another way. Who did? I, your the team. That your team. Y'all be talking to Punch, man. I don't be know. Punch, <laughs> punch is, see, Punch is a funny guy because Punch a joke with y'all. That's shit y'all don't know when we really and serious. And then he's behind the scenes like this. He don't really be Get serious. Up. Like, Punch will say something to y'all and he just be joking. <sighs> like, I'll say something like, I'll just be joking too. We just want to laugh. We just want to see. You know what I'm saying? It's just funny to us. Like, opinions <laughs> are funny to us. Everybody's opinions funny to us. Yeah. Word up. All right, man. Your opinions, your your uh, opinions, and your insight and everything, man, is appreciated, man. We need we like a really part two, definitely. Shit, We're gonna let you go. I'm gonna come business. back to the troll center. Oh boy, very <laughs> soon. Don't trip. Have your have your do rag on. Why well, stop that entertainment? The best, man. Why are you guys the best? Oh man. Before I don't know. Man. Let the fans answer that, man. I know nah, why. Don't be humble, dog. Nah, I ain't no, ain't no, ain't no humble. I know we the best. I ain't even no question of that. But I'm just saying, like, I'm gonna let the fans answer that because. I'm I'm gonna show and prove. I don't have to talk about it. We gonna see next year. We just turned up this year, and next year gonna be more turned up. You man. said you're so ready to slap the shit out of 2017. Mm. Oh yeah, big time. It's over. It's over for it. Brian new new 911. It's over for 2017, <laughs> man. Right. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. It's over. Don't talk. Hashtag don't talk to me. Right. Don't talk to me. There you go. It's no, no why hashtag talk don't talk to me. There's nothing to talk about. It's what you doing. Mm. Who doing what? Who talking? I don't want to talk. That's why I don't want. That's why I don't want to do this interview. <laughs> I told you I don't want to do it. food and beverage. I stay in food and beverage because when I come out, I'm gonna say some real shit and people gonna get mad. Right. They might get mad. I don't want to talk. We have to I'll do show y'all definitely. All right, thank you, Dave. Appreciate you. Part homie. two. Yeah, man. Wrap it up, podcast. Yeah.